Now, I'm going to start this sermon with a bit of a confession, which is that when I got the Bible Month booklet, I was a bit disappointed. Firstly, because the writers seem to have decided that the story of Genesis can be told only in the stories of men. Why does the booklet talk just of Abraham, Jacob, and Joseph? What about Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah? And so I also want to look at Sarah and Hagar today, as well as Abraham. But I was also disappointed because I suspect that Mark and Lewis have given me the most difficult week. (laughs) Now, on the face of it, it's a really lovely theme. God calls and blesses us. It's wonderful. It shows the care that God has for each and every person. That God's call gives all of our lives meaning. And that it's an enormous privilege that we can be a part of God's work in the world. But then we look at the passage for today and we realize that the story goes deeper than that. Yes, Abraham had the wonderful experience of being called by God and he immediately answers that call with his family and the people he had acquired, quite an insidious term. Yes, God fulfilled God's promise and gave them their own land which was already being lived in by the Canaanites. Yes, God promised to bless Abraham and Sarah's descendants, but they used the slave Hagar to speed things up a bit. And so the scene is set for multiple religions to emerge and for multiple claims to be made on the Holy Land, which we are still seeing the effects of so devastatingly today. I don't think that the influence of this passage can be overstated. So I think that this passage serves as a reminder to us of the responsibility we have when we are called by God. It teaches us the importance of trust in God and of what it means to follow God in the real world. It reminds us that this call to follow God isn't something we can just take for ourselves, thinking it's all lovely and it's only about me and God. No, this passage is about our call and our blessing being inseparable from others and from the world. Our first reading from Genesis 12, it can be seen as a fresh start after the events of the flood and when the population of the world has built up again. Now God is once again calling people and using them to bless others. I think we too often mistake what God is actually saying here. It's not about blessing individuals to make them special and to say that they are better than anyone else. It's that throughout human history, God has used humans to bless one another. We see this too in Jesus' calling of his disciples and in the work of the early church. God calls humans, fallible humans, to give the good news, to share God's love, and to build God's kingdom on earth. Abraham isn't unique in this calling, but he is the first in this era and who we are called to join, as so many have over the millennia since, to join in this call to bless one another. In some ways, Abraham and Sarah can be a good example of the way they immediately said yes to God's call. But there are also ways that they serve more as a warning of what we shouldn't do. God tells Sarah and Abraham that they will have many descendants despite their old age, and they really do believe this. So when it doesn't happen, they start to look for the problem. Sarah is so convinced by God's promise that she starts to believe that she is the one at fault. God promised that Abraham would have descendants she starts to think those descendants won't be hers as well. And Abraham appears to agree without any persuasion. 
Is he so used to his male privilege that he assumes the prophecy is more about him than his wife? Has he not realized God's vision for all people to be equal and for God to work through people of all genders? I just find this passage so sad because Sarah and Abraham seem to be assuming that she isn't part of God's vision. And perhaps that she is even getting in the way of God's plan because her female body refuses to cooperate. It's a story that happens again and again to so many people. Why do we make the mistake of assuming that our human selves can do anything at all to get in the way of God's power? Why do we believe that God will call some people over others? Why do we find it easier to doubt ourselves than to trust in God? And yet, the story of Sarah and Abraham reminds us that things happen in God's time. They only had to trust and wait a while longer for God's plan to be realized through both of them. But instead, they choose to force a slave to have Abraham's baby. And it makes me so uncomfortable that they would use this woman, this slave, as a means to an end. That they would force someone with no agency into further exploitation. And then to dismiss her when Sarah sees the effects of her actions. When we look at the stories in Genesis, I think Hagar is one of the most vital characters because she reminds us that everything is taking place in a real world with real consequences. When we get a call like Abraham and Sarah, we can believe that we should do anything and everything to answer that call. But we need to remember the effect that our actions have on others. We should think critically about that call and how we should be responding to make sure that it is genuinely coming from God and that our response is guided by God. We know that God calls us to bless others. So if by following God we are causing pain, that's a sign that we're not actually doing what God wants. Hagar represents the many people who suffer when we get it wrong trying to follow God. She's a powerful figure who's been used at different times to represent different people hurt by God's followers. For instance, the name Hagar has taken on an important meaning in Israel-Palestine, with a trend for Israeli women to name their children Hagar to show their allegiance with Palestine. Where their ancestors cast her out, they are affirming their Palestinian neighbors through politically naming their child Hagar. She's also been used to represent the many victims of the transatlantic slave trade. People who also had their names and identities removed, and just like the only name we know Hagar by, were just called stranger. People who were valued for what their bodies could do for others and not for themselves. And the worrying thing about these examples is that they were the product of a belief that God put some over others. That some are blessed and some are not. That if we are experiencing blessing, we can just celebrate that and be happy in our own little world without worrying about anyone else. When the church has got things wrong, it has been responsible for so much pain. And it's our responsibility as Christians to act on those injustices that our fellow Christians have caused and to make sure we do things differently and do things the way God calls us to do. We need to go back to that first call of Abraham and Sarah and really take to heart God's words. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. As Christians, our purpose should be sharing God's love and blessing with others, so that we are active participants in building God's kingdom here on earth. Passages like this can remind us of the complexities involved, but we can also see the ways that Abraham and Sarah were positive examples in the way that they immediately said yes to the call. 
And we also have the example of Jesus, who showed us what it is to minister to others in a way that focuses on the other. Where the outcasts are welcomed, the downtrodden raised up, and each person valued as an individual. This is the way we need to be. To respond to God's call and be part of this work, we need to completely trust in God and put aside society's focus on the self. Where God's call means we have to take a stand against the things that are wrong in the world, we should have enough trust to speak truth to power. And in all that we do, we need to make sure that we are guided by God, keeping our trust in God and doing things God's way instead of trying to do them our own way. So this morning, let us commit ourselves to following God's call in our lives, to be blessed, to be a blessing to others. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your call in our lives and the privilege it is to be a blessing for others. We are sorry for the times when we have got things wrong and not been guided by you so that we have ended up hurting others because we believe ourselves to be in the right. Show us how you want us to follow you. Teach us to trust in you so that in all that we do, we may do it following truly the teachings of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.